Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the second episode of the End of the Week podcast. Today is January 8th, 2016. 2016, right? Yeah, I haven't made that mistake once this year. Every year, you always write down, you know, the wrong year after uh, after the turn of the new year. But I haven't made that mistake yet. Have you guys? Um, I don't think I have, actually. I mean, I've done it in years past, and, like, every time I go back to school, you just always write the, <laughs> the previous year. It's and 2015, like, man. It. It's still 2015. Yeah, man. It's... I work in a government office where you have to sign and date every single piece of your life. Oh, no. And so there, <laughs> there like were a couple days where I was in the last year. This man's still living in 2015. I haven't made that mistake. I think I might be good. You know, once you get past the first couple of days... Of, uh, of writing 2016, you're usually good. But anyways, welcome everybody. We're back with the second episode of the EOTW Podcast. As usual, we have our roundtable of hosts here. I am TBL. We've got Black Fox. Hello. And we've got Nate. Do, 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 do. That's how Nate, that's how a government man says hi. <laughs> if you're wondering <laughs> about that. I'm going to remain speaking like that for the rest of the podcast. It's, just so you're all prepared. This is going to be you're a short be podcast. <laughs> It's gonna, just going to cut his audio completely out of the rest of the show. No more of that. <laughs> that was a joke, but you're not wrong. This is going to be a, a slightly shorter podcast. It is, yeah, because not a lot going on this week, is there? It has been... Not too much. Yeah, it's just been a relatively quiet week, which isn't really a bad thing. It's not a great thing, you know. In new Year, we're supposed to be looking forward to a bunch of new things coming up, but not too much going on in the gaming industry. Not enough to complain about. We've had so much lately that it's kind of nice to have just like a, a small lull. A down week. Just for a little while so yeah. that when we get some good news later, it's uh, it, more impactful. Yeah, you know, I mean, 2016 is already shaping up like it's going to be a pretty darn good year for video games. Uh, I mean, no matter what front you're on, Microsoft, Sony, PC, Nintendo, there's a lot of good stuff coming in the future. Oh, yeah. man. Next They're going to have a tough year to beat, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because 2015 was a great year for gaming. It was a great year for gaming. So many AAA titles coming out of there. So many surprise hits, too. You know, last show we spent a fair bit of time talking about uh, Undertale and your experiences with that. And I think uh, 2015 was really just chock full of great gaming mm-hmm. experiences. It definitely more than did. I could... Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, more than I can list. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What were you going to say, John? I was, I was going to say that it definitely blew 2014 just out oh, of the water. 2014, 2014 was 2014 bad. was dead. Yeah, it was a I bad year. I remember 2014. We, we got Smash Brothers. And that was about that it. That was about it. I mean, we got an Assassin's Creed game that was straight busted from the floor up. <gasps> yeah, but, yeah. Actually, did y'all hear that Assassin's Creed is going to a three-year dev cycle? <laughs> I wonder where they got that idea. Hmm. Scratching head. I, I'll, I'll join in on the applause. Though I heard that Syndicate <laughs> was actually pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I, Syndicate's not a bad game. Yeah, you know, most of them aren't bad games. They're not all, you know, Black Flag, which Black Flag yeah. was amazing. Uh, yeah, that seems apparently... to be the problem with Assassin's Creed is they're all, like, so close to teetering over into a good game. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're okay. They're okay games for the most part. And apparently the next one's going to be set in Egypt. Oh. That's cool. Okay, that's, cool. I, yeah. that's a different aesthetic. We're not in We're not in Europe anymore. Okay, I could take that. I yeah. mean, it's not feudal Japan, but, you know, you oh, got to take your small victories a, where you can. A feudal <laughs> Japanese Assassin's Creed. Could you imagine that? Apparently I don't understand how one. it hasn't happened. There is one on the Vita. Oh, yeah. Called, uh, you're right. You're right. The Vita, the Vita doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we keep talking about this thing like it's a real thing. Like it's not just a piece of concept art that never it's made it past the there. cutting room floor. The Vita The Vita's just exist. an idea, man. The Vita is an idea. It's an ideal you strive to. You strive to get away from. <laughs> you strive to get away from the Vita as you claw towards the 3DS and its multiple incarnations. Oh, Vita man. means life. It, it is an ended life is what I would say. <clears throat> now you got me ex- I can't believe I'm about these words are about to pass my lips. You got me excited about an Assassin's Creed game. Egypt. Oh my God, that man. sounds cool, man. I the would last be one so... I really liked was Brotherhood. Brotherhood? That's the last yeah. one that... I heard Black Flag was it was good. Primo Grey. It was really it was so good. good. It was glitchy, like they all are, but it was really, really good. Well, yeah. That's I played three on the Wii U, and <laughs> that was my introduction to Assassin's Creed. Like I'd played the other ones before, but I mean, like this was the first one I owned and like tried to beat. Blah. Three was one of the worst ones. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh man! Oh god! Ubisoft games on the Wii U. They they I'll, you know they tried. They gave it an earnest effort for the first two years of the Wii U. We got we got Rayman. Well, we got that late. We almost got Rayman. We almost got Rayman. We got uh, Splinter Cell. That's an Ubisoft game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Splinter Cell. What was it? Blacklist. Yeah. That was. Uh, it. That was really good. It was Ghost Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon Protocol. Warfare yeah, Two. Something. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, <laughs> I, Ubisoft's version of Call of Duty. I'd take it. Yeah, I, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure it was Blacklist. Splinter, Splinter Cell Blacklist. I want to say. Oh man, I can't remember. But whatever it was, it was really good. You and I played that like once, Nate. But oh um, yeah, 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 I remember. I went through the story mode like three or four times on Wii U. It was such a good game. Such a good game. The online was just straight up busted. Oh yeah, <laughs> but definitely. The single player was great. It was trying too hard to be uncharted. Oh yeah, in some places, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of uh, innovative ideas there. I love the um, I love the mercenaries versus uh, infiltrators kind of game mode they had going on there, where mercenaries oh, yeah. playing like uh, playing first person first person shooter mode, and the infiltrators you're kind of like uh, you're kind of like Sam Fisher himself trying to infiltrate an area that the mercenaries are protecting, so you can steal some intel, and you're in third person. Oh, it it was a really innovative mode. I just wish they would have fixed their online. Online yeah. was terrible. But well, I mean, they were also working with the Wii U so online. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nintendo and online. Hopefully that's something they get better in their next iteration, which is going to be something we're going to be talking about a little bit later. I'm excited. Just a little bit later, yeah. But all right, let's start off with the games we've been playing over the course of the week. John, why don't you hit us up? All right. Let me preface this with a short story about how my GameCube uh, collection <laughs> was tragically taken from me, and I never saw it ever, ever again. Rip. Um, my friend Andrew and I, we had a case full of GameCube games that we had collectively just com- composed over like four or five years of knowing one another. And one Christmas, uh, my friend actually gave me the whole case and said, it's yours now. Take it. Because his uh, we had already crapped out on him. He didn't have a GameCube. He was like, I don't have any use for this. They're yours. I'm like, okay. Cool, man. Thanks. So about two or three years later after that, <clears throat> um, he wanted to borrow the uh, case because he was going to let a friend borrow. And I was like, uh, all right, but I don't feel too great about this. He let his friend borrow, who was a um, lady friend at the time. And we never saw it ever, ever again. <laughs> oh. That's which the worst. broke my heart. It was mm, it hurts. It still hurts because we had both our copies of Melee in there and multiple oh. other titles. It was just, it was just a bad time. So fast forward to about maybe a year and a half ago, I decide, you know what, I'm gonna download Dolphin. I'm gonna try and you know play some of these games that I no longer have because at that point it it was already lost. It was it was gone. It was ripped. Rip the dream, and and I could not get it to work. However hard I'm, I I tried, it just would not work for me. Fast forward to last night. <laughs> this is literally last night. I opened up Dolphin and it said, you know, you have an outdated uh, firmware. And I said, okay, I I will go ahead and I download the new version. And I opened it. I make some tweaks here and there, and I open up Thousand Year Door. Works perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> and I get giddy like a schoolgirl on like Christmas, and I go to town. Like I'm sitting there. As soon as I woke up this morning after uh, uh, just tinkering with it, I just went ham. I'm already at a uh, chapter four. I just went ham on it. So yeah, I've been playing Thousand Year Door and a little bit of Skies of Arcadia Legends. Those Ooh, are the two sk- games I've just Skies I've of Arcadia Legends. On. Oh my! Oh, you're bringing back memories here, man. Oh god, I know. I haven't Dude, played Skies in forever. You should stream that. Yeah, you should. Like, I will watch you play Thousand Year Door because Thousand Year Door is an experience. Mm-hmm. I, I can't stream. <laughs> I don't have the upload for it. Rick, I have terrible. I, I don't even have a Meg. That's how bad my upload is. Yo, B, <laughs> record it. Upload it to YouTube. I don't care how long it takes. I started my YouTube career in like 2006, 2007. I had the same internet provider you do. Same one. And that's when I started with my Smash Brothers videos. Oh, man. <sighs> GameCube classics. Now, of course, uh, for those who uh, don't know, Dolphin is, of course, an emulator. Uh, all kinds of different people on the internet have their own feelings about that. But I think your situation is rather special and in, in, uh, really exemplifies... I lost everything. Yeah, why emulators can be such a powerful thing. 
because again, yeah. you've told me this story before in the past, and that's heartbreaking. Losing a classic collection of GameCube games, which are super duper hard to find nowadays, like Melee itself goes for like what, 80, 90 bucks? Yep. It's yep. ridiculous. So I had some rare games too. I had the Master Collection in that oh, thing too. You're making, okay, I've got my Zelda Master Collection. Like yeah. thing right here, it's right here in this drawer in front of me. You're making me want to pull out my my GameCube babies and just cuddle them. Like, don't worry, Daddy will never, Daddy will never let anything happen to you. I mean, that's non retail. That was just a bonus. That was a package. bonus. You can't, you can't get that. You can't get you it can't anywhere. Get that. And to lose all of that, that is just utterly yep. heart wrenching. And now that I, my dolphin works, I made an investment about about two hours ago. Went on Amazon. And I purchased a Wii U GameCube adapter so I can plug in my controllers and I can use them just like I used to because I ran into a problem. In the sections in Paper Mario where you have to rotate your control stick to do the uh, spinny hammer, mm-hmm. the uh, super hammer, and the uh, the uh, toilet paper roll where you roll up in the little <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to input that with a uh, with a four uh, keys in the left up right down and i did that for like about four or five super hammer prompts and i said my hands hurt i need to go I was about to say r.i.p to your wrists <laughs> you can't was it a piece yeah. of paper <laughs> w-a-s-d <laughs> this isn't working for me oh man yeah. so you, you, you but go ahead but those are those are the two games that i've been playing on because earlier this week i wasn't playing anything and then i just sat down and said you know what i'm gonna give this dolphin thing a second shot and it worked out perfectly and i couldn't be happier it's so good congratulations man yeah you know again like i said people have different opinions on emulators personally i love them and uh i'm of the mind you know if you own the game you can do whatever you want you you, you can play it on whatever platform you want i think you're mostly saying that for me (laughs) Yeah, we've had this conversation multiple times, Nate. I'm uh, I'm vehemently against uh, emulators to a degree. Like uh, in this situation, I think it's valid. Like if you already own the games, like it's one thing. I just like it. It kills so many like indie devs and like even big companies to an extent. Like Nintendo is trying to push their virtual console, but why would anyone buy anything from it because they can. Just download it from romsrus.com or whatever. <laughs> Romsrus.git. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, like, people complain so much that Nintendo won't fill out the Virtual Console library, but they have no incentive to because they're not going to sell because people can just download them for free. So, it's kind of like a neither here nor there thing for me. But here's the thing. If Nintendo actually releases a, a GC Virtual Console and puts their titles on there for, like, 20, 30 bucks... I would buy them. I mean, I would Mm -hmm. support Mm -hmm. one of my favorite companies rather than, you know, emulate it because I love the company so much and I love their product. I grew up with it and I would, you know, I would be just ecstatic if they would go ahead and make a GameCube virtual console because that's the one thing that I'm waiting for. It's to see if they announce for the NX. I don't think it's going to happen on the Wii U. Now, see, that's what baffles me. Like, that's a market that Nintendo could really capitalize on because emulating disc-based games is a massive hassle Mm -hmm. to the point where it's worth the convenience of just buying it. So, absolutely, I I don't understand why GameCube, like, unless they're planning on launching with the NX or even like the next iteration of handheld, if NX does turn out to be its own separate thing, um. Like, there is no excuse for why those games are not available. Well, I mean, could you imagine if the NX were to launch with backwards compatibility for the Wii, Wii U, and GameCube? That's a huge starting market for this thing. That's Mm -hmm. a massive gaming library that's just immediately available. That's one of the reasons why, uh, why the original couple of PS3s and, of course, the Xbox 360 shot off so well in the market because... You could just upgrade. You you didn't have to keep both consoles. You could sell your Xbox, your original Xbox or your PlayStation 2, and then just play some of those games on the next-gen console. It mm-hmm. gives you an incentive to upgrade. And, you know, probably one of my favorite quotes about emulation in its entirety comes from, uh, I do believe, Gabe Newell. In his words, he says, Piracy, which, you know, happens a lot in the emulation scene, is a service problem. People are pirating your game because they can't get it directly from you in an easier way. And I think that perfectly exemplifies Nintendo in a lot of senses. Like you guys said, we have the virtual console system on Wii U, right? 
We have a huge library of games that people want to play, but Nintendo doesn't put those games out in an easy enough fashion. Something that's coming out, I think, uh, next month, actually, are the original Pokemon games. Pokemon Red, Blue, and then, of course, Yellow, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The Game Boy emulation has been around <laughs> since the 90s, and uh, Nintendo has been doing Game Boy Virtual Console stuff for a very long time. Why is this only just now happening in 2016? Why why wouldn't Nintendo put those games out before, you know, for availability on the Game Boy Advance, on the DS, on the 3DS? People go for the emulation option because of convenience and because of availability. Nintendo well, pro- well, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Nintendo provides its own convenience when it's when you've got your home console. I would love to be able to play my N64 collection or at least a, a bunch of select titles from my N64 on my Nintendo Wii U. But they're not available. Super Smash mm-hmm. Bros 64 isn't available. I can't play that on my uh, my Wii U. I'm certainly not going to go digging out my N64. I think he's seen enough uh, enough rough days and has earned his rest. So what do I do? I emulate it on PC. I emulate it on a handheld console. Or shoot, em- you can even emulate N64 games on your phone now. You can even inject a WAD and install it. Yeah, or in you your inject Wii if you really want to go that far. And that's the it, it's. I'll, and that's I won't pushing it. Yeah, that's pushing it. I won't say it's all about convenience, but I very much agree with Gabe Newell's stance that it is very, very heavily tied into convenience and uh, availability. All right, good. And it makes no sense to me. Because we have a GC adapter for the Wii U, yet we have no virtual console <laughs> no, for it. None, no, no GameCube unless, games. Unless the NX is three gens backwards compatible all the way to the GameCube, you're looking at a huge, like, wasted opportunity. And it just boggles my mind. Like, why are you not doing this? <sighs> Go ahead, Nate. Well, <laughs> what I was going to say I is... I can feel He's like, objection! <laughs> it's coming. Well, I, I, I have a few, but we'd be here all day if I... If I... We can talk about this some other time. Um, I believe Nintendo uh, is put. They, well, they've said as much themselves. Are planning on uh, supporting the Wii U uh, for a very long time, and possibly through the lifetime of the NX. Mm-hmm. And I think that Nintendo is gearing up to make the Wii U the HD sixty four GameCube era console. So you're thinking they're going to do the what Sony did with the PS two. Essentially, they're. Okay. I I don't want to say they're holding their own games hostage, but it's a little bit what they're doing, where it's they're making it so that the the games are unavailable anywhere else, so that when they release Twilight Princess HD, you know, it's yeah. like y- you you gotta buy it there. I, like yeah. nobody's going back and buying a Wii or an old copy of Twilight Princess from GameStop. Yep, they're gonna get the new HD whatever. But going even further back, like, I would not be surprised if we're going to see, like, Super Mario Sunshine HD, um, Luigi's Mansion HD. These games could all very easily be upscaled and put on Wii U for a $40 price tag. Absolutely, you know, and, uh, again, I'm surprised they haven't been put up there already. And I think I, I really like the way you described it there. Nintendo holds its own games hostage. That's pretty much what they do. I think that might be how I uh, how I describe it from now on. Um, I agree. I, I would agree with that point completely. What if they actually went ahead and made just like you know they're doing HD games for like GameCube games. Mm-hmm. What if they went ahead and made like a bundle and did both Galaxy games and remastered them? I'd buy it. Yeah, I'd buy I mean, it on the spot. Exactly. I don't think anybody would say they wouldn't. Yeah. Like, yep. Nintendo... Uh, let's not forget, Nintendo is also under new management now. Yeah. So, th- there are going to be some changes. Some subtle and some probably dramatic. And I bet one of the fronts they tackle first is their the way they're handling their uh, their older games. Their classics, which I, I certainly <laughs> hope so, because... Um... If it was if those games were available, I would buy them in an instant. I own. <laughs> I was literally earlier at work when I had some downtime. I I have an emu- I have a Game Boy Color emulator on my phone. I was playing Pokemon Blue for the lulls, and I would buy that in a heartbeat if it were available for Virtual Console on my 3DS. I take my 3DS almost everywhere I go, and I would love to be able to play it on there. And I'm gonna buy it the moment it comes out. 
Mm-hmm. So again, hopefully, hopefully Nintendo is going to step forward and start uh, start re-releasing. Well, it's not even so much a re-release, but uh, adding to the Virtual Console some of their older games that uh, we really haven't seen for quite some time. But anyways, you're right. We're going to be on this topic all day. Nate, what have you been playing, man? Uh, well, I actually, uh, in an effort to get this microphone set up, I went back and played some Undertale and did like a little bit of recording here and there. Uh, nothing that's ever going to see the light of day. I know. But I want. I want. I want. I want it to see the light of day. No, no, no. <laughs> none, none of it's good. Um, so I play a little bit of Undertale. Uh, I've been kicking around the idea of going back and playing uh, a whole nother. Uh, story through. Uh, been playing a lot more Monster Hunter Cross. Recently got really into Striker Lance. Um, the I'm I'm just gonna talk about Monster Hunter Cross. <laughs> <laughs> the the Lance uh, got in a, a new uh, upgrade in Monster Hunter Cross, where it's like you know how have you ever played Lance? Yes, and okay. try when it was OP. <laughs> yeah, well it's it's back to the the top of the food chain now. Block yeah. everything. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the triple stab, he just stab, 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 dodge, stab, stab, stab. In this, uh, with the, uh, guild style, you go stab, stab, thrust. And it's like this big thrust that does like five hits. <laughs> what? So, um, the set that I play, it's, it's really powerful, but it leaves you immobile for a little while. Which is really jarring for a lance player because like you've got to be able to block or dodge whenever you need to. Um, so I'm playing striker style, which gets rid of that. But I get three hunter arts, and I it, you can just be insanely aggressive with it. Um, I really don't like uh, Ariel or Bushido because they take away too many of the the like core moves, and I feel like they don't replace it with enough like horsepower. But striker, it's just never ending stabbing. Which is like pretty much what Lancer is always meant to be. Poke, mm-hmm. poke, poke, uh shuffle to the side, poke, 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 shuffle to the side. That's what I remember I laugh, about Lancer. I laugh at people when they tell me Gun Lance is more powerful than Lance. No, it's not. I, it's not at all. I've made Gun Lance for almost a decade. And I will tell you right now that Lance blows Gun Lance out of the water. I just haven't seen what Cross has. When I see what Cross has, I think I'll make the, you know, the choice whether to play Gunlance again and put myself through hell, or if I'll just play <laughs> something else like Sword and Shield, which has a lot more options. Gunlance is fabulous in in Monster Hunter Cross. The only playstyle that I can uh, really recommend though is Aerial because you get the forward hop, so you can stay like right up next to the monster but also if you do the hop and you you uh, launch off of the monster you can do a downwards blast overhead slam and then once you hit the grounds you can do a full burst and just rinse and repeat until the monster is a tiny a thousand tiny pieces (laughs) anything that gives gun lance more mobility is what i need (laughs) Mm -hmm. because gun lance is one of the slowest weapons yeah it's so slow it's not just slow it's not it it, like your moveset doesn't work around it being slow Mm -hmm. so like you don't have enough range to make up for the fact that the monster is going to hit you and then be all the way across the map and you're stuck like slowly shuffling like bowser style (laughs) so uh i've been playing a lot of lance that's great um been trying to i've basically just been fighting a raytheon over and over and over and over again the same way i did in four just like to learn all the movesets and things like that so not making a lot of progress with my hunter rank or armor sets or whatever, but you're getting that money though. Making getting that some cash, money, yeah, getting, getting them um, parts. What I'm earning is experience. So, and that's about it. I played a little bit of Animal Crossing, what, but hey, which one? The one on the 3ds. Oh, I think Maybe all my f- villagers are dead. <laughs> yeah, I, I came back and like there were cockroaches everywhere. My hair was a mess, and there were you know prostitutes hanging out behind t- Tom Nook's shop hey, and drug dealers. You're and... looking for a knuckle duster? Not from somebody with that much manliness in their voice. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was dark and sepia tone, neon lights everywhere. It was 
somebody had to bring order to this lawless town, and I'm just a sheriff to do that. So, so basically, your town has become New Jersey. I wasn't going to say that, but you're not wrong. <laughs> you're from New Jersey, bro. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, see, you know, I love I love the fact that Animal Crossing does that sort of thing that you know, it, it continues to grow even when you're not playing it, but that's also the reason why I'll never turn it on again. Yeah, right? <laughs> like at, uh, either g- like get rid of that or at least I w- I want the wimp option. Yeah. Like like Fire Emblem gave me the wimp option. I want to be able to play where it's like I can fast forward every day, and also none of my villagers will ever not love me. Yeah, if if you stop playing for oh say a year and a half, because that's what I did with Animal Crossing New Leaf. This this is pretty much how it works for me with Animal Crossing. I'll start playing it, I'll get really into it for a couple of months, and then I'll take like three days off and be afraid to turn it back on because I don't want to see what my villagers think of me. <laughs> <laughs> What's really sad is like I'm the demographic that monster monster hunter. Wow, I I can't stop. Uh, Animal Crossing is marketing too. Because, like, I work all day, I get, like, a 15-minute break, which would be perfect for checking on my village, maybe picking, like, a Mm -hmm. couple apples or something, and then being done and then just checking on it, like, once a day. But I'm not going to do that. (laughs) No. (laughs) Nah. Ain't nobody got time for that. I want to sit and play Animal Crossing for an hour like a man. But... No, uh, John. Did you ever get? Uh, did you ever get New Leaf, or were you ever into the Animal Crossing series? I got New Leaf because uh, <laughs> Sam was actually <laughs> one of the biggest Animal Crossing heads. He played um, what was the one for GameCube? Uh, Just the original uh, one, Animal Crossing. Yeah. What's Animal- the one for Wii? City Folk. City Folk. C- City Folk. Which yeah. is yeah. literally he was really just... into that one, and I got it because I thought I was going to be playing with him a lot. And it turned into just me, like, after we stopped playing, it turned into me just going to the island and just grabbing beetles and getting money. That was it. That's the only thing I did. And then I started a couple projects. I think I made a bridge, (laughs) and I was happy about that, and I built a house, and I was like, yeah. And then I just stopped playing, and I don't remember why. It's like Minecraft for me. I'll I'll log on every once in a while, build something incredible, and be like, oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to log on tomorrow and see what I find in that cave, and then not get on for a couple months. And I want to be able to come back to it and not face the negative repercussions of my irresponsibility as the town mayor. And God forbid you get Mr. Rossetti. Oh, gosh. Oh, jeez. You know what I actually used to do? with all my Animal Crossing games, and my uh, especially New Leaf, is I had a little slip of paper that I would put inside the game box. And I would always write down the last date that I played on, so that if I did take a break, when I came back to it, I would just reset it to one day after that date. And that's how I used to cheese it. But that's too much maintenance. I can't do that every time I... Yeah, I, I can't do that every time I play a game. And so now it just sits quietly angrily in my uh in my desk drawer and i haven't touched it in like two years you actually just reminded me john and i played minecraft oh we yeah did. you guys were you were on minecraft for a while yeah we had a really good time with that you yeah, should play with us yeah i need to log in and see what you guys have got people ask me to put minecraft videos up on the channel all the time but it's like <clears throat> nobody nobody comes to my channel for minecraft <laughs> <laughs> i should uh i should loan you uh falcon in your face oh Oh yeah, I gotta. Do you find, <laughs> I, I gotta find that. I, I think I still. I actually think I have that. Somewhere. It's on my uh, old uh, YouTube channel. Big. That was a great. Um, that was a great texture and graphics pack you had on that video too. Yeah. Perfectly oh, aesthetic. <laughs> I've actually been kicking around the idea of purchasing another um, Minecraft realm. A, per- a permanent server. Yeah, and um, I don't know if I get enough people to do like uh, get in on it. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll actually buy one. So, uh... Well, as a guy who's made this mistake on YouTube before, all you have to do is mention Minecraft in a video, and you'll get messages from people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this? If you are pro Nate buying a Minecraft realm and opening it to the public... And us having uh, Minecraft videos. I'm just throwing tweet, that out there. <laughs> tweet at me, uh, at the EOTW podcast Twitter... Uh, I'll be on there looking for your tweets, and uh, I will. I'll think about it. I will strongly <laughs> think about it. We'll see. We will see. All right, uh, that's it for me. Okay, I guess that means it's my turn now. Um, 
Okay, so in terms of gaming, you know, I've been playing the usual, the Destinies, the uh, the Black Ops 3s, but the real big kicker that I've gotten back into, somewhat hardcore, Pokemon. And you didn't invite me. <laughs> oh man, that was a... I can feel the disappointment in that. <laughs> I actually... Okay, so I don't remember if I mentioned it uh, on the podcast before, but uh, Eric who we both know, mm-hmm. um, really into GDC. Nice. So he's been teaching me the Poke Strats. And so <laughs> the elite Poke Strats? I've been playing Showdown. Uh, oh, do you know what Showdown Lord. is? Oh, Lord. Pokemon Showdown? Yeah. yeah. I Just so, here comes the me- Here comes the meta. Here comes yeah. the meta. <laughs> and uh, so I've put together a, a fairly decent team. Like, I'm still nowhere near where he is. Like, he's like could actually go pro levels of, like, strategies. But um, I'll play with you, man. Just, like, say the word and I'll play Pokemon with you. Yeah. What tier do you typically play? What, what? Do you play VGC? Do you play OU, UU? There's uh, like... VGC. VGC? Okay, so you play doubles. Doubles yes. VGC. All right. Well, at least that's what I'm playing right now, like, to help Eric out. Yeah, that's the actual Nintendo license tier. Yeah. For anyone knowing, anyone mm-hmm. wondering out there, they promote the doubles right now. Yep, and it is fun. It's it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, Pachirisu for life. Oh no! After that tournament, oh no! <laughs> Pachirisu surviving. What was that Draco meteor last year? Oh my gosh, that was that was a ridiculous, ridiculous uh, tournament finish. But um, I, I just kind of, you know, booted up the, the new 3DS one day, and I was just going through my games, and I was like, oh, yeah, Pokemon X and Y, those are a thing. And so I loaded those up, you know, I've got my full team on there. It's a moderately competitive team, and I was just playing around with it, and I was like, you know what? I bought Omega Ruby a year ago and then never played it. So let me... Same here. Let, yeah, let me, let me spend 20 minutes seeing what that's all about, and then 20 minutes passed, and then... 20 hours passed. <laughs> yeah. And so I have just really been grinding on. Uh, look, I'm that guy who buys every version of the Pokemon games because I want to get everything. So I bought Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Nice. And um, I've just been playing through the both of them for the past couple of days and uh, really, really digging it. I love a lot of the changes that they made in Omega Ruby. It, I don't really think it gets enough credit or maybe I just missed out on the hype train when it was in full swing. But uh Great game. Great game overall. Have you, have you played the Delta episode? No, I have not gotten that. I have not gotten to that yet. Okay. I'm like maybe once, on the once fifth you've complete, Once you've completed the game and all of the, the side content, you got to let me know what you think. Cause, or maybe we should talk about it on the podcast because it is something that Pokemon has never done. And it's something that I want every subsequent Pokemon to do for the rest of time. This this is sounding good. Is it sort of like what happened with X and Y, where after you beat the game, you get a bunch of extra little story content thingies? Yes, but I don't want to go any further than that, because it's it's something to be experienced. Like, it's, it's like, nobody plays Pokemon for the story, let's be honest. Like, the story is always like, boy or girl wants to be Pokemon Master. There's some bad guys, but you get the... The gym badges anyway, and maybe save the world. Hey, I had to the stop end. Giovanni's evil plot to use Mewtwo for something, but he can't because he lost Mewtwo. So he was just going to take over a couple of companies that make Pokeballs? That's literally the plot of the first game, everybody. <laughs> oh, and then you no. teach him the, the value of friendship. And you taught him the value of friendship and to never, ever speak to his son. Sean. Yo. For a for a future playthrough, what you should do is catch six Pokemon, one to trade all six, oh, no. and whatever you get is your team. I've seen that. I've seen that happen. Wonder Locks are amazing. They are the most fun I've ever had. I just grab six random pokes, trade them away, grab six random pokes from random people around the world, even if I get like a zigzag goon or some random... Say, what if you get stuck with six shuckles? Hey, man, that's, that's just you, bro. <laughs> That's just the that's just the way the hand was dealt, huh? That just you better pick up that, that toxic team. You just got to pick up toxic fam and just stall them out. That's all you got to oh, do. Man. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> Shuckle can stall. Shuckle big. That man is fatty. big. He can stall. Oh god, you know I was watching um I was watching games done quick earlier today, and they were doing speed runs of Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Yellow. Nido King big. Nido, did you watch it, dude? 
Yes. Oh my gosh, Nido I already King. know the strats. Dude. Yeah, Nido Next King. accuracy with horn drill. Mm, so. Ne- Nido King body bags, all of red, blue, and yellow. Unbelievable yeah. how, uh, how how good that was. I got dude. I got a little worried when he got to Agatha because Agatha's always rough with that freaking yeah. um, substitute Gengar trolling, yep. just straight First up trolling. First gen is all about speed and one hit KO. One hit KO. That's all you have yeah. to worry about. All, all, all you have to worry about if you're using an, a a Nido King is Persian and I think like Gengar or something. Those mm-hmm. are like the only two pokes that can beat you in any speed tier. It's just. That game's so much fun to watch because you look at the strats and you're like, how do people come up with this stuff? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's been out for like 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. Oh, yeah. we're old and we like Pokemon. But um, Speaking of uh, challenges, have you guys ever attempted a Nuzlocke? Yeah. No, I refuse. I I actually, um, as as part of a, uh, like a bet, uh, I started up a hardcore Nuzlocke where um, if I... I, I went out and bought an extra copy of Pokemon Black and White, and uh, the rules are, it's all the basic Nuzlocke stuff, including, like, no healing in battle, and all that other jazz, but if you lose 10 Pokemon, your journey's over, and you have to destroy your cartridge. Really? What and kind of my fr- massive Me and my friend both challenge. did this. And we both wound up destroying our cartridges. Wow. Why would you um, do that? What? I wouldn't uh, go that far. Well, if I if I I was able to get two copies of Pokemon, what did I say it was? I think it was it was uh, black, black and, and white. white. Yeah, it was black and white. It was in black and white too. Yeah, no, it was the first black and white. Um, I was able to get them for like two copies for about five dollars. Okay. So. That was the only reason why we did it, and I already had my own copy of Black and White. But um, yeah, that it's like the pressure really helps. Like I don't know, like sell the camaraderie, I guess. Yeah. Of like building a team and relying on them and things like that, and it's it's a lot of fun. I I wholly recommend people do at least normal Nuzlocke challenges for themselves. Just for the kicks and giggles. We one do. of mine was in a uh, Heart Gold, and as soon as I got to Dragon's Den, game over. Rip. That's all oh. I needed. <laughs> Rip. That's all you mean, I needed. You mean you didn't wipe it, Miltank? No, oh, I gosh. did not actually, because I grinded my ass off until level thirty, so I wouldn't wipe oh, the Whitney. So you you body bagged Whitney? There was no oh, yeah. no mm-hmm. rollout action milk drink going on. Nope, mm-mm. I was not having any of that. I prepared for that moment. This man <laughs> came in there like, "Hey, Whitney, what's up? Get it." Yeah, <laughs> that's another one of. That's another one of those things I've been kicking around the idea of recording. Just like do a nuzlocke, see how far I can get. People but, uh, are into uh, gaming torture on YouTube, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's true, <laughs> and, and you're not wrong. Although we do yeah. not endorse destroying your consoles or your your game cartridges. Don't do that. Don't 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 do that. Don't folks. do that. Don't do yeah. that. Especially if it costs a lot of money. Yeah, that's the don't do that. Not like this. But yeah, Omega Ruby, really fun. I love I, I something I really hope that they bring back for the next Pokemon game, which is hopefully going to be unveiled sometime this year, since we didn't get one last year. Uh, people are speculating we're going to be getting Pokemon Z this year because of uh, tie-ins with the new upcoming movie. Mm-hmm. You guys hear about that? Oh, oh yeah. The new Zygarde transformation. That yeah, they... we're going to get our Pokemon Z. But um, something I hope that they bring over from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is the flying overworld system. I thought that was super cool. I think it should have been... Honestly, I don't understand why they say fly for last. Yeah. Like, fly should just be, as soon as you beat the first gym and you catch a Pidgey, bam, fly. You can fly back to your hometown and all that stuff. But the system in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for that is just so cool where you get to control yourself going around the world map... And uh, it, it really opens things up. You can go to special locations that are sometimes there and sometimes aren't. It's just, they, they did a lot of innovative stuff with Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. It's not just a rehash of Ruby and Sapphire, and I'm actually playing it right now. But it's Yeah, it's it's phenomenally better than the base game, which is absolutely something that I, I can't necessarily say about some of the other Pokemon remakes, like mm-hmm. Fire Red and uh, Soul Silver. Like They're all phenomenal, but... like offer the exact same level of quality that you would get 
for playing the original. Which is a great level if, of quality, but it just doesn't which, didn't exactly, really bring yeah. too much new to the table, other than the uh, the standard stuff like, hey, double battles and crap like that. Well, Fire Red and Leaf Green had the, um, what was it, the Seraphi Islands or whatever? I, I forget. The Serebi no. Islands? Serebi Islands, yeah. Yeah, they had like an extra exclusive uh, from... Uh, uh, Emerald, which yeah. is where Cerebi yeah. is from, I believe. No, Cerebi is from... Cerebi is from, S- um, is from and gold? Silver and Gold, yeah. That's right. I forget, I don't know. <laughs> so many pokes, There's many mons. S- what, 720 of them now? Something like that, yeah, it's getting pretty crazy. I wouldn't be heartbroken at all if they just, like, cut off and just, like, for, you know, like, subsequent generations, just, like, added more ag- Mega Evolutions... Or, like, pre-evolutions. But, like, the old uh, man that I am, it's getting a lot harder to... <laughs> like, I can't... Keep I can up barely, with it all. Yeah, I can barely remember. Like, I, I can name all of the original 151. In rap then, form, by the way, everybody. Yeah, in rap form. I can do it. <laughs> I will. But, um... Yeah, I yeah. used to uh, I used to 100% the Pokemon games. And I did it, I think, up to black and white. And then after that, I, I just can't spend all that time catching every single Pokemon. I mean, I still buy both ber- or both versions of the game, but uh, I just can't spend all that time catching everything. Dude, I remember as a kid, my friends and I would study Pokemon Cries mm-hmm. and so that we could identify them without even being able to look at them. Oh, man. Good times. Like, you, <laughs> um, like I, can, I can name every Pokemon if you show me a picture of them, but uh, otherwise I'm like, uh, there's too many. It's a lot going on. Great series, though, and uh, again, I am looking forward to a, a brand new one, hopefully coming out sometime this year. We usually, we yeah, we before last year, I think we got a Pokemon game literally every year, didn't we? Mm-hmm. For like the past ten years. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like they're pretty much few and far between, but we were getting one every single year, and hopefully we're going to be getting another one uh, this year. Can't wait. Can't it's wait. that reuse tech. It, <laughs> gotta squeeze out every last drop. Well, you know, X and Y was a massive change from the older games. I think that I think Pokemon in particular made the jump to 3D particularly well. They did oh a good yeah, job. I agree. They did a great job. Speaking of which, Nintendo, where's my Wii U Battle Col- Coliseum Stadium? It's called Pocket Tournament, bro. Pocket. No, it's no, it's not. It's called Pocket Tournament, bro. Also, also Pokemon Tournament. Looks like it's going to be incredible. It does look like it's going to be pretty good. You know, the guys that, uh, who, who is developing it's the Tekken guys, right? Yeah, it's uh, Namco. <laughs> Wins Evo. Wins. Oh, can turn. Wins <laughs> Evo. I want to see, I want to see Dark Mewtwo get banned. <laughs> Wins <laughs> Shadow Mewtwo. Banned. Yeah, we, we going back to Shadow Pokemon now? Oh, no. <laughs> How Gale, cool would it be Gale if it turns out? No. Yeah, Gale of Darkness. I want it. I want it to all tie in, and then it turns out that it's a big promotion for Gale of Darkness too. Oh, don't say stuff like that, dude. Nate. Don't say they'll stuff never, like that. They'll never ever do it. It'll but never I want happen. It. Don't say stuff like that. <laughs> that was uh, Intelligent Systems, right? They I do believe that. it was. Yeah, it was the yeah. Fire Emblem Bros. Oh man, oh, and so Paper good. Mario Bros. And Paper Mario Bros. Good stuff back in those days. Intelligent definitely has fallen from uh, their high horse. Yeah. Well, they still mm. do good on Fire Emblem. Well, yeah. Fire Emblem's kind of a given, but Paper Mario and, uh, well, Paper Mario and... <laughs> I think they get a little more freedom with, uh, Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem less with that. Mario. Yeah. I mean, they pretty much revived the franchise, so... Hmm? Well, I won't so say revived, but they really pushed it into the forefront. Yeah. So is Pokemon all you were playing, or...? Pretty much is all I wanted to talk about. Uh, Omega Ruby's been super duper fun, and I'm trying to focus on that. I haven't been able to to singularly focus on a game in a while, of course, you know, because it's not quite my job, but YouTube is a rather large part of my life now. And mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the games I play, I play specifically for YouTube. Not just because I love them, but, you know, also to provide content for people to watch. And so, you know, it's nice been nice to just focus on one thing and grind away at Pokemon and kind of rediscover my love for the franchise. Because I love Pokemon. Let me ask you this. Does... Uh, can you play this copy of Pokemon on your Capture 3DS? Uh, no, it's on my new 3DS digital. I'd have to buy it again on the Capture. Ah, that's a shame. I was gonna say, 
Well, Sean Poke really battles. can't carry that around with him as he goes places. <laughs> yeah. well, it, walking well, around with the board on it, you know. It, it's not that big, actually. The uh, the capture board is it's it's only slightly larger than the the normal back to the normal 3ds. You you oh. really don't notice it. It's not that big, not that big at all. But all right, that's the games we've been playing this week. I feel like it's time to take a little bit of a break. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. I agree. All right, so take a quick break, and we will be right back with the EOTW podcast. Don't tune out. And welcome back to the second episode of the End of the Week podcast. This is the section of the show where we discuss some gaming news. And you'll notice it's going to be a very, very quick section because uh, not a whole lot going on in the gaming industry right now, which, uh, for better or for worse, it's been a rather quiet start of the year. But, you know, as with things... uh, (laughs) In the online world, something is bound to go wrong. And we do have a couple of things to talk about. First up, a little bit of a fire has been lit under uh, Treyarch and Activision over the past week due to some... Well, I can't really say to, that it's due to some uh, practices. It's due more so to the way certain things are handled between PR and the community. And uh, <laughs> how do we even start this story? Okay, so basically, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Treyarch and uh, Activision's brand shiny new COD, fantastic, really fun to play. Like most other AAA games, it's got its fair share of exploits and glitches that uh, haven't really been addressed by the developer in any sort of meaningful way. Well, you know, that's how things happen. Sometimes glitches don't get worked on for a while, and maybe sometimes they're just a little bit too hard to to simply patch out. It takes a big, deep infrastructure change before you can get them worked on. But usually you at least hear something from the developer about these sorts of issues. Well, (sighs) Activision did it again, didn't they, John? (laughs) Yep. What happened, and this is what you told me, Sean, is that there was a game-breaking exploit to... um, that the zombies community found out about where you could, uh, up, up, I think it was the liquid divinium, right? Liquid divinium. You could obtain this in-game, I guess, uh, it, would you call it a currency? I would call it kind of a... It's it's a pretty mat. much a... It's kind of a currency. It's a it's an item that you can purchase through microtransactions. Yeah. And this is a big th- uh, problem, is that it was recently introduced as something that you could purchase with, with real-life money. And, recently as well, people have found a way to get infinite amounts of said item so that you could use it to unlock more of these, um, I guess you call them the little gumballs that you use in the gumball. Yeah, the gobble gum. Yeah, the gobble gums. But basically, so, it allowed you to skip the skip the entire process of purchasing this liquid divinium. You could uh, farm it out for a couple of hours and get hundreds upon hundreds of this item that Activision wants you to buy. Well, you could obtain them in, like... In the game, right? In game, actually, yeah. You could attain them normally in game. Yeah, but you could just buy them and skip that process entirely because it takes a while to get these, usually. Um, so Activision, following the recent uh, news of this happening, patched it out basically the day after it got spread throughout the entire community. <laughs> and you want to know why? It's because Activision's kind of holding them by the neck and saying, um, oh, this is hurting our, uh, our Hurt monetary game." Our shareholders are not happy about this, and our employees are not happy as well. You better patch this out. And Treyarch is literally strung by a rope. And they're like, okay, we get it. We'll we'll patch it out as soon as we can. Yes, Amasa. (laughs) Literally just, like, forced to, like, patch it out as soon as they can so Activision can stop breathing down their neck. And this is a problem that actually affects Bungie as well. I mean, Sean, we've... We've seen what happens when uh, something affects the silver market in uh, mm-hmm. Destiny, right? It gets, it gets patched, patched out immediately. immediately but because Activision's profits, well, they don't plummet, but they definitely kind of like it, it affects downward. It affects the bottom line. Mm-hmm. But other game-breaking exploits like Sprint, you know, the Sprint cooldown, and all kinds of other weird things generally don't get addressed for quite some time and that's really the heart of what's going on here now you might be sitting back there saying well so what's the problem they patched uh, they patched a they patched a glitch what's the community mad about the community isn't mad because of the glitch being patched the community is mad that with the quickness again within 24 hours of this uh of this farming exploit being found 
An update was pushed out to address it, but many other game-breaking glitches in zombies and the multiplayer mode like duping your account, if you're running around in the Black Ops 3 uh, multiplayer mode, you've probably seen a couple of level 1000 guys. Yeah, they're not legit, by the way. Um, nobody nobody has uh, prestige enough to hit level tw- or 1000. I think the highest legit team is like at prestige 500 right now. None of those get addressed, but as soon as an exploit happens that could potentially affect uh, microtransaction sales, you know, uh, that could potentially affect Activision and Treyarch's bottom line, within a day, it gets addressed. That's what the community's mad about. Like, oh, well, you're willing to push out an update to fix something main- only because it's costing you money. When these other glitches that are completely affecting people's experience of the game, they just don't get talked about, don't get addressed, never patched. And that's pretty much what's going on here. And I have just been enjoying it by sitting back, popping some popcorn, and watching the many, uh, <laughs> the many Reddit communities dedicated to Call of Duty, zombies, and all of that just rail against the machine. It's been an interesting couple of days. Yep. Um, going back to a point that you said earlier, you know, about the sprint bug that was in Destiny, how long did it take them to patch that out? They did. Over it's, a year. It, no, it's still in the game. It's still in the game? I it still they... happens. No, you, Not the, like this. The sprint cooldown is still a thing. The sprint oh. cooldown is still a thing. <laughs> it's a, it, it still hasn't been patched out. Whereas, say, something like the Sparrow League Racing Book. For those of you guys who are watching this on YouTube and have been on my channel for a while, you'll know. I talked about it on stream. The When the Sparrow Racing League came out, there was a $10 uh, DLC book that you could buy to record your uh, to record your racing stats. It wasn't worth 10 bucks, by the way. I just bought it because I'm a meech. But, yep, same here. <laughs> but, um, but this book, upon completing certain challenges that are held within the book, you could get some exclusive gear. Well, it turned out you, you didn't actually have to buy the book to get the gear. You could literally just go into the uh, DLC store and click on the challenges, and for some reason they would auto-complete, and you would get the exclusive gear that people had to basically pay 10 bucks for. That was patched how fast? Within, like, two days? Yep. Like, within two days. And, and it took them a week to patch the hammer glitch that was game-breaking uh, back it, in October. It took, like, a week and a half for them to patch the hammer glitch, and then yep. even longer for other... Other long-standing issues with Destiny, and it's just a <laughs> recurring thing. <laughs> Blink strike, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a big one. Oh man, and it it just led to a conversation personally between me and John about uh, companies and PR. I personally understand this was probably Activision jumping down Treyarch's throat, saying, "Hey, this is costing us money." or rather costing us potential sales of Liquid Divinium. Because, again, shortly before this exploit went live, um, (laughs) Treyarch kind of went in, limited the number of Liquid Divinium you can get per game, and then started selling it as a microtransaction. You can feel about that how you will. But I can imagine that Activision did go to Treyarch and say, hey, this is uh, costing us potential sales. Get on it now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not in the next update schedule. Which uh, I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't recall if uh, Treyarch has an update schedule for Black Ops Three, sort of like Destiny has with uh, with Bungie, where updates usually come on Tuesday. But they got it out again within 24 hours, and I can understand that. You know, it's just something that you don't like to see as a player who really cares about the well-being of the game and the uh, the, the current state of, of said, uh, I guess, patch, I guess you could call it. If something's broken, you want that to be fixed if it's affecting your gameplay experience. This, however, wasn't affecting anyone's really, their gameplay experience except for the people that, was, that were actually doing the glitch. It was just affecting the deep pockets at Activision that were saying, eh. Yes, because, yeah, absolutely, because this doesn't affect other players. The Liquid Divinium um, exploit didn't affect other players. What it allowed you to do is it allowed you to to buy and set up more Google Gums um, uh, uh, loadouts and whatnot and have access to those abilities while you're playing zombies. It doesn't affect other players. It's not like it's, it's a PvP thing where you can get some super OP thing that you can use against other players. And it was addressed super quickly, again, because it cost them money. Mm-hmm. Do you guys mind if I play Devil's Advocate for a moment? Please do. Sure. Okay. Um, well... I understand where people would be upset about this. You got to kind of look at it as like they're, they're paying people to do specific jobs. So I imagine there are, there is a specific division that is in charge of making sure that microtransaction based bugs are dealt with swiftly. It's not necessarily the same people who would be say, you know, trying to make sure that a weapon 
has the right stats or that, uh, you know, you can't duplicate something. It, it's not necessarily the same people uh, doing those things. But, it, I mean, you're absolutely right. Activision more than likely uh, expedited that bug being fixed because Destiny is a game... It's an MMO, but it's not an MMO. Like, you're not paying a sub subscription fee. Like, they rely on those microtransactions to continue paying the people who maintain that game. So while it's undoubtedly scummy, like, it's also a necessary evil, because if that kind of thing doesn't happen, and they're not making the money, and the investors are pulling out, there's no more Destiny. Like, then they're just going to move on to Destiny 2 or whatever other project. But here's, a, here's another thing, though. When you have this, I assume, small to medium-sized team dealing with um, exploitable bugs that affect microtransactions in Destiny and Black Ops 3. A live team, as you will. Yeah, a live team. <laughs> That I mean, you know how much it costs to push out a patch to these consoles, like ten to fifteen thousand dollars to push out a patch to these consoles. That's a lot of money to blow, but it's mm -hmm. also a lot of money for them to gain back. And it boggles my mind that they would just push out this solitary patch just for this one thing, when there's probably a whole bigger team working on these game-breaking issues. However, slowly it may be going. Why don't you just? Put one of those things you're working on that is completed just in that patch along with it to, you know, garner in a little bit of the rage that may follow you fixing this bug after 24 hours. Just maybe give the community a little, uh, you know, a little give and tug. It's just like a giant tug of war between these PR guys like Vondahar and the um, COD and uh, the COD Black Ops 3, like, com uh, community. Yeah, I can't talk right now. But you've got Deej, and you've got Vaughn on this uh, on this one side of the rope, and you got the communities on this other side. And you have to maintain this yin and yang type balance, and it's really hard for the PR guys to do. You kind of have to give the community something for them to accept another, I guess, wrong. I mean, this isn't wrong, but it's kind of teetering on you not fixing issues that are plaguing the game that the community cares about, but plaguing something that Big Daddy upstairs cares about. Mm -hmm. And I think there has to be some middle ground that these companies have to come to for there to be that yin and yang type balance. I mean, it's more so affecting uh, Black Ops 3 now than Destiny. Destiny's just kind of in a dark period. We, <laughs> we'll, Sean and I will probably talk about that in some stream. But, you know, a preview for a preview is a... Uh, <clears throat> again, we'll get to it later. Destiny. All right, the last thing we had to talk about today was uh, Nintendo's plans to possibly unveil the NX this year. And surprising no one in 2016, <laughs> there is a Seriously. rumor going around that uh, we might be seeing more of the NX as early as March of this year. What do you guys think? I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm, I, can, like, I can agree with that. Nintendo has... I think this is probably the best kept secret Nintendo has ever had. Because, <laughs> like, every... Nintendo's patents are very easily discovered, and uh, they they flood the internet. Mm -hmm. Like, we knew what the Wii U was going to be long before. You remember when we thought that the Wii U gamepad was going to have haptic feedback? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember so, several discussions about that. There's none of that with this. There was one patent for a full-screen uh, Vita-like portable device where the entirety of the console was the screen. Yep. And um, that's pretty much it. And that's about all we got. Uh, there's a lot of speculation right now that the console is a handheld home console hybrid, uh, which I still don't buy into because Nintendo still makes a lot of money selling their 3DSs. handheld devices. Yeah. Not just 3DSs, but I mean, like, historically, they have always done better with their handheld devices. So I don't understand why they would limit themselves in that way. Maybe they're they're hoping that um, because people are only interested in their handhelds, which isn't true, um, it will help you know push the sales of home consoles. But um, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know if I buy that either. That um, it, it's going to be some home console handheld hybrid. 
Seems a little far fetched, even for Nintendo. I think, um, I and they've stated as such, they're going to continue to support the Wii U. They're going to continue to support the 3DS. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I guess this is good as good a point as any for us to start talking about our NX predictions because, as far as we know, like by the, the, the this could be our last chance. Like we didn't get a, to talk about it last year because there was no podcast last year. Um, but the, the, the NX is rapidly approaching, like far faster than I think a lot of people would even like, especially Wii U supporters, because, you know, we bought their console. Um, but what do you guys think? What, what's the, what is the NX? What, what is it all about? Uh, personally, I think it's just going to be their next home console and I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm a guy who bought the Wii U the first weekend it was uh, it was the first week it was unveiled, and uh, the Wii has certainly seen its uh, fair share of trials and tribulations and its fair share of success. It had a rough first two years due to an extreme lack of uh, of, of real content that it picked up for in the second half of its life. And yeah, I'm okay with the, the NX coming out this year if it does come out this year. I agree. Um, for me. I have no problem with it because if you look back at like a uh, Super Nintendo like N64, it's about the same amount of like you know dev cycle. You got about maybe five. Time, yeah. yeah, you've got like four to five years in there. And uh, was the Wii U released in 2012? Was it 2012? It was released in with like Zombie U and all that. Uh, was, yeah, I believe yeah. so. I believe it was 2012. So, I don't think the NX is going to come out until probably next year. I don't think it's... I think they're going to show it to us at uh, E3 and Tokyo Game Show. They're going to show us the uh, concept of it, what kind mm-hmm. of power it has, so on and so forth. And they're going to push for maybe a... I don't know, maybe like a spring to summer release next year. And... That would be fine by me because that would be about five years between uh, consoles. And if they're going to keep on supporting the 3DS and the Wii U, I have no problem with that. As long as they keep the content shoveling into to all three consoles, I don't think there's going to be any uh, you know, backlash or any type of uh, community negativity. But um, I don't think it's going to be a hybrid. I think it's just going to be a home console. But if it is... I'm not sure I'll I'll mind it too much as long as I can play games on the go and I don't know there may be some transferable content between 3DS and NX if it is a portable console. Wouldn't it, that be cool? It may have like a Street Pass feature, you know, could be kind of something like that. I'm not sure, but I don't have too many predictions to make, so I guess I'll just go to Unite. I want to throw a bit of a curveball in there. I think. That the NX, and I've thought this for a really long time, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I've still maintained this opinion. I think it's going to be another handheld. I think Nintendo is going to stick with the Wii U because they're 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 building momentum on Wii U. Finally, like why would they jump ship now? Whereas 3DS has been successful, incredibly so and has been out for longer, I think the 3DS is is closer to getting a, a new iteration than the Wii U is. Um, uh, one of the big reasons I think that is because, remember back to when the new 3DS came out, there was an interview with a developer who said uh, that the new 3DS was originally never going to have the super steady 3D, uh, Miyamoto uh, played around with it during the development of the new handheld console, and said that with the new three, if the new 3DS does not have this, there is no reason for us to sell the new 3DS. Mm-hmm. Which means they were already developing a new handheld at that point. Like Nintendo's probably always developing something, but th- that they had technology that it, that like far. In development that they were able to shove it into another console says that they've been working on it for a while yeah you know development processes start well well in advance so i have no uh i have no problem believing that they had started the next 
their next console generation and their next handheld generation probably a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. So I could I could definitely see that. I I think possibly what pushed that was uh, the 3DS didn't start off well. Like no, much like no, the it Wii didn't. U, it staggered for quite a while, and it, it wasn't until like it's a year and a half, two years into its, its almost life. yeah, almost two years into its lifespan is when uh, it really picked up steam, and then uh, essentially started printing money. Mm-hmm. Much like every other Nintendo handheld, and mm-hmm. I called it from the beginning, and I'm sure everyone else here did. Um, so I think Nintendo, I, I think that the, the 3DS is pro- possibly like reached its effective limit. And that's about when Nintendo always unveils the next one. Not necessarily releases because like, uh, with the, with the GBA micro, like they, they announced, or I, I think they announced the DS and then they announced the GBA micro. Mm-hmm. I think it was, it was like somewhere in that order. So I mean, like th- when they say they're going to continue to support 3ds, I think that means that they're going to they they have at least a year and a half left in the 3ds. Certainly bam, could be. Yeah. Bam, new console. Certainly um, could be. I could be wildly off the mark. <laughs> I mean, Nintendo's obviously working on a hand or I mean, uh, home console of some sort. But I agree with you guys. I don't believe it's going to be a hybrid at all. I think that's cutting away a huge portion of Nintendo's profits for no reason. Um, I, I'd i love to believe that they would do it for the convenience of their fans, but they're a business. Like, they've got to mm-hmm. sell stuff. So you can't, if, Yeah, you can't cannibalize your own sales. And uh, their handheld market makes way too much money for them to want to do anything like that. Way too much money. It's just a question of what innovative thing are they going to do next? Because 3D was such a huge push, mm-hmm. and it's just a question of what's next. Because that's a hard like mountain to climb up to like raise. You know, you have to build another mountain that's taller than that. That is a huge milestone that you like came and just revolutionized the handheld market with. And you're and if you do release a brand new handheld, you have to top that. Mm-hmm. Or else you're just receding back to, you know, I guess, well, I wouldn't say like Game Boy days or DS days, but you need to come up with a huge sales pitch, a huge feature that your handheld has that makes it better than 3DS, or you just make it backwards compatible and we'll all be happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, let's see, what can Nintendo time travel? <laughs> um, it, it could be a time traveling console. It literally takes you back. To the year in which uh, the game that you want to play was released, so you can experience it in its original form. And divination, it can see into the future, <laughs> tell you about your success. It's a game. Yeah. And your, your failure. Um, <laughs> seriously, though, like that is the one thing we'll n- we're never, ever going to be able to like predict. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nintendo has always been able to amaze and excite us with brand new stuff that nobody else wants to do. And, and nobody mean, so, else thinks to do. Exactly. Um, I think of any of Nintendo's uh, uh, innovations, I think the gamepad was probably their, their biggest miss. Mm-hmm. Um, even Nintendo's begun to, like, like they're burying the idea of their own gamepad. And so that's another reason why I don't believe that there's going to be another, or, or a hybrid console where uh it's a handheld and a home console because nintendo clearly didn't have any ideas for the gamepad it just seemed like what was going to be popular at the time like it's blatantly obvious they wanted to market or like get in on the uh, the tablet market the tablet market yeah it, it it made so much sense on paper like you've got four people in your household somebody wants to watch tv i feel like playing super mario bros i'll play it on my gamepad like the convenience of it made complete sense, but they didn't follow through. Like, not all Nintendo games support the gamepad. Not all Nintendo games use it uh, cleverly. Like, and I, I, certainly I, not all uh, not all third party games. Nowhere did, near. But speaking of which, I just bought Minecraft for the Wii U. I was appalled to find that there is no function for it other than it just being a second screen 
on the gamepad. There is no item management. There is nothing. You can't even just like check the map or like player statuses or whatever. It's I, just a second screen. I know we want to wrap up here, but I want to go back to what Nate said about the uh, gamepad being being able to play Mario Brothers while someone else is watching uh, like TV or something. Us being twenty three plus year old uh, males. Um, have you guys ever encountered a situation where you were sharing your TV and you actually used your gamepad? Nope. Nope. Okay. So I've, I've, that tried is... to, I've tried to humor the idea by, mm-hmm. like, shutting off my TV and, like, walking into the next room with the gamepad. Artificially that creating work. the situation, yeah. And it yeah. just was not, was not something I did. I think I may have tried it once when, like, a, a friend came over and I was just showing him how the Wii U worked and I was like, yeah, you can take the gamepad downstairs and play up here. Oh, wait, no, you can't. Yep, it gets cut <laughs> off. And I mean, like, let's be realistic here. Most games that are playable on the uh, gamepad only aren't terribly graphically intensive. Like, mm-hmm. have, like if you try to play split-screen uh, Zelda Hyrule Warriors on gamepad and TV, you're looking at, like, a 15... 15- uh, frame drops like yep. like the 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 polygons are reduced dramatically. Most of the particles are gone. It's really like, bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean the gamepad wasn't the the console itself wasn't powerful enough to support mm-hmm. its own wild idea. So uh, I hope and this I, I I'd like to wrap this up a little bit um, with the NX. That if it is a uh, like a handheld console hybrid, it that it's at least in some way two separate units. Like I don't want the like oh it's it's all on the the NX home console and you stream it to your NX you know boy or whatever. Yeah, that would be awful. Through 3G with Nintendo's new streaming oh, no. service, like, <laughs> and it can't be a disc-based console either because you're carrying around a a disc-based console on, like on the go. That's just asking for it to get scratched up. Like PSP did it. Oh, oh yeah, no, they but they had. The, I'm sorry, I'm misremembering. Uh, they had the UMD. protective case around it. Yeah, the UMD. Um, but it will have to be a cart-based system or all of it is digitally downloaded. I don't think anybody is going to make that switch. Well, except for Sean, because Sean likes to like download his games. But there are a lot of people that like the physical copies of mm-hmm. games. It's going to oh, yeah. be a question of if it is a home console and you can take it on the go, you have to figure out a way to transport those games without them being like damaged. Like This base is just thrown out the window at that point. But... Again, which ugh. I mean, it's one thing's for sure. Country. Whatever they're gonna do, I mean, hope again. Hopefully, we see it this year. It's gonna be an interesting take on uh on Nintendo consoles. And, and I don't know if I'm gonna put much stock into it being uh, two separate units because uh, that that seems like a lot of uh, a lot of extra hardware, which can't help the cost of the console. Like that absolutely can't help the cost of the console. That's true, but we'll see. We will see. All I know is that I want to hear from the new president. Mm-hmm. I want oh, I want to see him up on stage. I want to see him walking the floor of E3. I want to I want to see directs. I want to get to know him like I knew Iwata. You know. Yeah. Hopefully we get uh, we get him in a Nintendo Direct or some kind of conference sometime soon. Either that or the uh, Reggie Bot can just you know take over <laughs> not only all Nintendo but the world as we know it. I'm down with that. But all right, I think that's about enough discussion on the Nintendo NX. What do you guys think? I yep. think so. And we have reached the tentative end of the second episode of the EOTW Podcast. We're at that wonderful part where we tell you guys where you can find more of us on the internet. John, where can they find you? You can follow me on Twitter at BlackVox. It's just E-L-K-V-O-X. And uh, you can follow the End of the Week Podcast, which I guess, Nate, you're going to plug that, I guess, right? Yep, uh, we are at end of the week. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> capital E, uh, capital W, end of the week. No spaces, dashes, or hyphens. Should be pretty easy to find. 
And of course, you guys can find me everywhere at the Black Link on Twitter, at the Black Link on Twitch, and of course, at the Black Link on YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this right now. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. But all right, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the second episode of the End of the Week podcast, where every day is the end of the week. Thanks so much for sticking around, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you next week.